Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Cronuts. That's right. And what are Cronuts? Cronuts are the donuts that make people go nuts. And unless you've been living in a cave for the last year, you know that a Cronut is actually a hybrid between a croissant and a donut. And to say they're all the rage is the understatement of the century. So anyway, I need to get started. This is going to be a long process. In fact, I'll just warn you right now, this is going to be a two-part video... In this episode, I'm just going to show you how to make the dough. And then in episode two, we will fry and eat and analyze. Okay? So for step one here, we're going to start with a slightly sweet yeast dough. So I'm going to throw one package of dry active yeast in the bowl of my stand mixer. And then you know the drill. We're going to add some warm water. We're going to let that sit for about five or ten minutes. And at that point, we can go ahead and add the rest of the dough ingredients, which are some salt, some sugar, some milk, some melted butter, some real vanilla extract. I mean, what kind of person would use imitation vanilla for a cronut recipe? That's crazy. And then we're going to toss in one large whole egg. And then I gave it a mix with a whisk, but I have no idea why, because I still need to add some nutmeg, which of course I'm going to freshly grate in. And then we're going to dump in our all-purpose flour. We're going to take the dough hook attachment. And then we're going to knead this until we form a very soft, sticky dough. But now with my hand, I'm going to attach this to the machine. And on low speed, I'm going to knead that for about three minutes. Now, usually we would need this longer because we want to develop that gluten and form that elasticity, but here we don't. All right, if it's too elastic, it's going to be very difficult to work with. So like I said, we're only going to give it a couple minutes, basically until it just comes together and everything pulls away from the sides and comes together in a dough ball like that. And at that point, we're going to go ahead and transfer that onto a floured work surface and just kind of feel it up a little bit. All right, what I'm testing for here is if it's too wet, I'll knead in a little more flour, but mine was feeling absolutely perfect. So at that point, we're going to wrap it in plastic, and we're going to toss it in the fridge for 20 minutes. And while that's chilling, we need to talk about the butter. So for this recipe, you're going to need six ounces of a high-quality, ideally European style, which means low water content, unsalted butter. And I want it to be very soft and spreadable. Okay, so I left mine out at room temperature for a few hours. And after 20 minutes, we're going to pull our dough out of the fridge. We're going to dust it lightly with flour, as you will throughout this process when needed. All right, don't use too much, though, only when it's sticking, only when you need it, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to roll this dough out into as perfect a rectangle as we can get. And please be warned, nature likes circles way more than squares. Probably because the universe is a circle, but that's just a guess. So what you're going to have to do is use your hands and kind of pull the corners out and basically force it into a rectangular shape, as you can see me doing here. And if you're persistent, you should be able to get pretty close. And then once we have as close to a perfect rectangle as possible, we're going to take half the butter and we're going to spread it on the middle third of the dough. All right, try to get it as even as possible. So if you've made puff pastry before or croissant dough, we're basically using that same technique. And by the way, this video is already going to be way too long. So I'm going to give a ton of extra information on the blog post because this technique is usually done with sheets of cold butter. But as usual, I'm making it easier for you. We're also going to use probably about half the butter that you normally would use for a puff pastry or croissant dough recipe. So yes, these are basically gonna be diet cronuts. So we're gonna spread that on there. Once that first half is down, we're gonna fold one end over, All right? So that third goes over the middle third, and then the rest of the butter gets spread on top of that. And you'll notice I'm not going all the way to the edges. You want a little bit of exposed dough. And when the rest of your butter is spread on, take the last third, fold it over, and you can kind of lightly press the edges together. At this point, we're gonna carefully transfer that onto a sheet pan. I'm going to throw a piece of plastic on and a towel, and we're going to go ahead and refrigerate that for 20 to 30 minutes to let the dough and the butter firm up. All right, very critical. And then you're going to take it out and be careful. Do as I say, not as I did. Do not poke your fingers into it. You want to handle it very gently. In fact, I should use the wax paper to transfer it. Again, we're going to lightly dust it with flour, and then we're going to carefully roll this out, flatten it out a little bit. We're going to try to keep as close to a rectangular shape as possible. Please note that air bubbles will occur and are totally okay and somewhat fun to squeeze out. Nothing to be afraid of. And by the way, if you're waiting for a that's how I roll pun, don't hold your breath. We're better than that. So we're going to roll that out into a rectangular shape. It doesn't have to be as big as our original one, which was probably about a quarter inch thick. This is more like a half inch thick. So once I have that rolled out, I'm going to do the classic letter fold again. One third goes over that way. The other third comes up over the top. Again, we're constantly shaping with our hands, trying to get those corners as square as possible. I'm going to give it a little dusting of flour here, just a very gentle roll to flatten it out. And then that's going to go back into the fridge for another 20 to 30 minutes until the dough and butter has chilled again. 
Now, during this resting period, you don't have anything else to prep, so just consider it free time. And then about 25 minutes later, we're going to pull that out, and we're going to do the exact same step. We're going to roll it into a rectangle and do another set of folds. By the way, before we fold, we generally want the most screwed up side facing up, and whatever end is the most screwed up, you'll start the fold with that end. All right, and that's not even a big deal, but if you have a choice, you'll want to fold the uglier parts in first. And then at this point, we're supposed to chill before we do the next turn, but we're not going to. I'm going to save you a whole step. Without refrigerating, we're going to turn ours. We're going to roll it back out into a rectangle. And it's kind of funny. You would think a recipe I've never eaten before or tried, that I would try to make it without adapting it, but you'd be wrong. So like I said, we're going to go with a highly controversial yet time-saving double turn and fold. And after those two folds and turns, we're going to go ahead and throw that back in the fridge, this time for two hours. And after those two hours, I think we might be ready to make some donuts, or at least with half the dough. So after two hours, that's what it looked like. Even though it was in the fridge and it's cold, it's still going to rise a little bit. You're probably going to have some more air pockets in there. Don't worry. Just gently roll it out. And at this point, I decided to cut it in half and try to make donuts with half the dough and save the other half for further experimentation, which you will see in all its glory in part two. So I'm going to put that half in the fridge. And we're going to go ahead and roll out this half. I'm going to say about 3 8 inch thick. And then you want to use a nice sharp circular cutter and make nice clean cuts. You're definitely going to want to use a smaller cutter for the inside. All right, these are only going to fry for like two minutes per side. And you really do need the hole in the center to cook these evenly. Otherwise, enough heat just will not get to the center. And by the way, you are not throwing away all those scraps. I didn't show it, but you will fry those up and serve those ugly but delicious cronut shards along with your regular cronuts. And then once our donuts are cut, we're going to transfer those onto a lightly floured sheet pan. And I'm just going to put that in a draft-free place and let that double in size, which is going to take about an hour. And by the way, I don't want you to use too warm of a spot. We do not want that butter melting. So I just used my empty turned-off oven, and in about an hour later, maybe an hour 15 minutes, that's what they look like. They rose beautifully. And at that point, I was ready to fry the first batch. So I warned you, this is a two-part video. All the good stuff's going to happen in the second video. So consider this the foreplay. Tomorrow we will consummate the cronuts in part two, where this will happen, and then that will happen, and then this will happen. And then with the second half of the dough, this will happen, and then that will happen. So head over to foodwishes.com to get the ingredient amounts and all that extra critical info. And as always, enjoy! Enjoy!